ISD Reporting Services is at the National Academy of Sciences, Washington, D.C., reporting on the International Dialogue on Our Global Commons. This meeting, hosted by the Jeff and IUCN, was preceded by a Science Day where leaders, experts and innovative thinkers gathered to review scientific findings to protect our global commons. This is a meeting, but it's also the start of a long process, a long journey ahead uh, that will hopefully get uh, society to understand that we are on this planet supported by the global commons. Here at the global commons dialogue what is so exciting is precisely that now we know the science and we also know that we've not been as impactful as we need to be but we also know that action has to be now. Over the past few decades, we've seen a sizable increase in conservation action in response to a range of human activities. We have many of the tools already to maintain natural capital in hand, and the evidence out there shows that conservation works where it is implemented. How can conservation success go to scale? The policy changes necessary across agriculture, water, and food, urban and energy systems can allow the removal of the limitations or allow conservation success to go to scale. The two-day international dialogue brought together a diverse group of stakeholders to discuss how best to disrupt the systems that drive pressures on our global commons. Our mother earth is terribly sick and our economy is on collision course with nature and our own prosperity in the future is in huge danger and nobody around me was talking about it. Johan Rockstrom retraced the state of our commons from the Holocene to the Anthropocene. The United Kingdom starts off its mechanical industrial revolution, starts also the infrastructure expansion around the world and very rapidly we are connected through railway and different trading schemes around the planet and we're coming in the late 19th century to the point where Fleming invents antibiotics and we start really longing uh, life expectancies and the rapid expansion of agriculture and suddenly we veer off from the linear incremental pressures on planet Earth to the exponential rise on every Earth system parameter that regulates human well-being. And now we are in 2007, 2009. We are recognizing the need for sustainable development goals. We published the planetary boundary science, but we continue on this unsustainable journey right up to the top of exponential curves. We are at a saturation point. Welcome to the Anthropocene. Selected speakers explored what is required to disrupt the current systems. I come from a, a generation which was energized by movement. I think it's incredibly important to popularize the science as Johan has done, that was such a compelling uh, presentation. I think it's this interconnectivity which is a bit of a problem. You know, I'm, I could be a food person, a specialist in agronomics, I could be an energy infrastructure person, I could be a hydrologist in water, but I'm very rarely a food, energy, water person. So as a result, we get quite siloed into our different areas and the message does not come together. If we're going to succeed in uh, conserving the global commons, we're going to have to transform our economic system across the whole piece. And we need disruptive, not incremental change. Take cities, for example. For the last hundred years, we've been designing cities for automobiles, not for people. What you need is cities that are designed more like we used to design them before we had automobiles, where you have much more compactness, you had mixed use, so you have people living close to their work rather than way out in the suburbs. Participants deliberated on radical changes and partnerships required to flip existing systems and reduce pressures on our global commons. They summarized these messages during the wrap-up session. We're in an airplane. What's the one dial we need to look at that's going to save us? We need champions, we need our catalysts, our drivers, our enablers, and our conveners. Never before have we understood our place in the global commons as we do now. I am really interested in what kind of action plan to disrupt the systems, what kind of narrative, and what kind of roadmap can bring them together. So that's the thing that then I would like to see out of this global commons initiative.